This Friday, the free How to Hot Shot video series will be available and you can each grab your own copy. Here's a clip. Phone call between you, the carrier, and the broker. You negotiate and you say, man, I could move it for 650. He's getting paid a thousand. He's not telling you that, but he knows he has some wiggle room. He's like, you know what? Fine. You get paid six, you agree to 650. He, he agrees to 350. You're both happy. You pick it up, you take it, you factor your load and you're done. You get paid. But that's how loads work. That's how you find a load to move. I've also locked in a 30 day free trial with the DAT load board for all of you. Get your link with the free course or underneath any of the videos on the channel after Friday. I don't think I've been this happy for a load. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Since uh, my first load in the game. Monday morning, uh, about 10, 15 in the morning, I just snagged the $450 load. Hey, in the Corona effect times of the year, you gotta take what you can take, man. A new day and definitely a new landscape. So I'm picking up a pallet and two metal housings for electrical components. That alone freaks me out. I have to tarp these really well and strap them on the edges so that I don't bend them in the middle and then tarp them all. Again, really, really tight. I don't want to own these. One day I'll get smart and pack my own ladder so I can do this without the help of a forklift driver. The drop off for that load was close to home. So I must've made it back to the ranch at about seven o'clock. Now I'm off to my next load Tuesday morning. It's Tuesday morning. I drove an hour and a half uh, to pick up and I'm here, but I gotta tell you, I feel like I'm the only living organism on this site. Check this out. Ah, there we go. Somebody's here. That is not what this place looked like when I walked in the first time. You can see how like cavernous and ghostly it is. Uh, yeah, I walked in the first time and I was like, hello, hello. <laughs> and I didn't see a soul. So I always ask if I'm okay where I am. It's one of the first things I ask the loaders whenever I get on site. And in this case, they said, yep, you're fine where you are. Sometimes I get nervous because I see, you know, tractor trailer dock uh, doors and those are dock height. I decided to tip it this way so that things won't just go with the flow of air and go down. They'll go up. Heaven forbid something gets loose. Uh, I'll be in my mirrors the whole entire time. This is nine feet tall. My trailer, this is nine five. Those are nine five. My trailer's three feet. Ten, eleven, twelve, five is where I am. Have my my nav set to uh, for low bridges, anything below thirteen six. And of course, I'll be reading my bridge signs as I'm traveling and coming up on bridges on the highway. And I'm headed to Maine. I'm gonna stay the night on this load. Doesn't happen often, but I'm going to. Hey, Corona makes you stretch. <laughs> makes you look for loads wherever you got to get them. Um, I almost booked a load to Pennsylvania for tomorrow, but it was booked by the time I got to it. But anyway. Let me get this $800 and keep it moving. I did my best with zip ties and padding to keep the belts from being cut and to keep loose wires from swinging all over the highway. The dunnage that they used, however, was the problem. It's my fault because ultimately it's my responsibility, but I should have used dunnage that was eight feet across instead of these tiny 18 inch pieces of dunnage. I'm on the side of the road and not because I'm broken down. because I was looking in my mirrors and I had this loaded. The green, the item was in line with, you know, in line with my rub rail right here. Well, in my mirrors, I can tell that this is shifted over because I can't see the rub rail in my mirror straight back like that anymore. And then on this side, on 
this side you can clearly see that it's shifted. Like it was right here, and now it's there. That's shifted. This whole block is shifted. want to have your uh you always want to have your vest on on the side of the road always but again it totally shifted like a lot this is why you always want to be in your mirrors to see when things shift that shifted a lot and this shifted so much that it's only hanging on that much so this is serious so what i'm gonna do is a stay safe pull off to the side of the road put on my vest I'm gonna put on my emergency triangles so the people behind me know that, you know, I'm going through something. Uh, I'm gonna take my chains and binders. I'm gonna bind each one of these pieces on the back side of each. So like on the other side, on this piece, but on the other side, but in this area, I'm gonna put a chain, same thing there. And I'm basically gonna pull them that way so that I can get these things back to straightened out. Um, hopefully the wood blocks don't slide out and one of the machines doesn't go like that. We'll see how this pans out. Triangles are like insurance. When you buy them, you never think you're going to need them. But when you have them, thank goodness you do. I stopped five more times before I got to my delivery, even called the broker. This was bad. This was not about the money. This was about making sure the public around me was safe. So I kept going slow and getting out to check the load. Greetings from Maine. <laughs> well, I spent the night in Maine because I took a hike up here yesterday. I uh, went from Connecticut to Mass to Maine. It was an interesting load. Anyway, fueling up, about to head back south. So the thing about taking loads that are far away from me, because you guys know I'm always home every night for the most part, um, is that, like for example, it's a five hour drive back home, but I'm in the middle of nowhere. There's not a lot of loads leaving Maine going back toward Massachusetts, Connecticut, or even further like New York or New Jersey. So um, freight wise, I have a long time on the road to check. I'm hoping something will come out of uh, the mass area going, you know, Connecticut, more than likely Jersey or, or New York going down that way. But um, if not, then I'm just going to jump and look for some vehicles because typically there's vehicles coming out of way up here going south and they usually pay well. They usually pay well because not a lot of people take vehicles south from up north. So that's my game plan, uh, fueling up the boss hog and I'm out of here. I got to keep it moving. Well, that plan was an absolute bust. I found nothing going back south. But the good news is the broker felt really bad for everything I went through with that load coming up to Maine. So they paid me an extra $200 for the difficulty. I'm not mad about that. Mainly because I proved with my videos that the loaders used the wrong dunnage. This load I picked up literally on the fly. I was on the road, I refreshed my load board, something popped up in Hartford, Connecticut, which is minutes from my town. Uh, and it's going to Westfield, Mass, which is maybe a 45 minute drive, if that. So quick snag, I love little loads like this. Um, it's 48 miles, paying 350 bucks. I mean, you can't beat it. Uh, the main reason why I'm making this clip though is because I wanna stress to you guys, whenever you book a load, always, I mean, always, always make sure that you get contact information for someone at the receiver and someone at the shipper because i'm here at the ship site and as you can tell it's a construction site and these are the messiest kind of pickups uh because nobody ever knows anything so if you have contact information for the foreman or the gc or somebody at least you can reach out to that person and say hey my name is so and so i'm picking up xyz and bringing it to wherever the other thing is uh, always, always make sure that wherever you get the load from, that they put a note on there about uh, the stresses, what exactly it is that you're picking up. Because when you get on site, like right now, I called the number, they had no clue what I was talking about. Called another number that was on the Raycon. Uh, they kind of knew what I was talking about. This is really starting to feel like the blind is leading the blind, maybe? Like I said, nobody knows a thing about anything that I'm picking up. I'm trying to make this as quick as possible. Not too bad. It only took 20 minutes to figure out what the heck is going on my trailer and where it's going. But this clip that I'm showing you guys actually saved me because, as you'll see, the load was put on really, really messy. And when I got to the receiver, it was so messy, they didn't even want to take it off my trailer. Thank goodness I had this clip right here to show that it was put on the same way that I arrived with it at the receiver. 
This may look straight or square on my trailer, but it's a return product, which means that the wrapping is already ripped off. As you can tell, it's not square at all. It's leaning off to the side. This is definitely a messy load from the beginning. The more I drove, the messier this got. I mean, the load and the situation. I finally got to the receiver and they literally looked me in the face and said, we're not taking that off your truck. We don't want it. We can't resell it. So I called the broker, told them that, and they asked me if I had anything that I could do with it. What the heck am I going to do with this load? So I called a, a junkyard place and asked them how much would they charge to take it off the trailer. And I called the broker back, gave them that price. Thank goodness they had their own people to take it off finally. The only good thing is that this $350 load turned into a $1,500 load. This is where I should add this fine print that says, these results are not typical. It's funny how making $1,500 on a load will make a flat tire not a big deal. Yeah, the construction site gave me a flat tire. But now I had a little loose change to stop at Home Depot and pick up the DeWalt impact wrench I've always wanted. Yeah. Call it lucking out or call it God showing me a little bit of mercy, but... Finally, one of my consistent brokers called me with this load, made a quick 750 to finish out my week. I'm done. Hey, hit the like button for me, and don't forget to grab your copy this Friday of the Hot Hot Shot video series. See you then.